the other day I was checking out a bunch of videos on YouTube ran across this guy he was opening up a game that he had found in a thrift store thrift store and got my attention because it was a baseball game any anytime I see a baseball game that I've never heard of um, my ears go up my antennas go up and uh, I check it out so I watched him unbox it he kept saying well this as he was unboxing it he was referring to Stratomatic a lot like this reminded him of Stratomatic and I don't see that but we'll get to that later um, he uh, didn't really know much about it like I didn't know anything about it either he didn't know anything about it either I think he I don't really think he plays the games I think he's more of a you know buy and sell type guy he got my attention and I want to show this game to you guys today I've already put some pictures of it on the tabletop baseball plus Facebook page and played a few games uh, its mechanics are a lot not like any other game out there and you'll see all that here in just a minute this game is this game right here clubhouse baseball show it over here uh, this is the 1990 edition actually it's 91 but it's the 1990 player cards so Cincinnati Reds were World Series champions and those are the cards that are in it one thing you'll notice officially licensed by the Major League Players Association that's kind of cool. None of the other, you know, not too many games have that. Now that doesn't mean it's a good game. Definitely doesn't mean it's a good game, but it helps to have that on there. Now I think this game only came out in maybe like three years. 89, 90, 91 maybe. It's kind of in that range there as best I can figure. Um, and it's those the only three years it came out. Um, also on the box it says 20 to 30 minutes play time age 11 to, to adult 624 cards that's the one kind of drawback of it it's there's not you're not gonna get those extra players it's basically the guys that played the most so we're gonna take a look at here's the back side of the box as I toss things around in it but we're gonna I'm gonna open this up we'll do a little unboxing and I'll do some sample play of the game so I'm gonna switch this camera around and then we will take a look at it alright so let's take a look at what comes in the box so you got your instruction booklet which is 32 pages but as you can see it's a uh, you know a little bitty not the regular a regular size piece of paper by any means so if you uh, condense it down it's probably gonna be more like 10 11 pages plus it's basic and advanced instructions both in here so this is just a little team profiles booklet uh, gives you your rosters, your starting suggested starting lineups, batting orders, lefty righty data. We'll take a look here. Um, so here's the Yankees. It doesn't really tell you a whole lot, honestly. Um, you can take a look at it, but it's. I guess you're, that's the percentage of time he faced a lefty, 28%, 72 against righties. Slugging percentage on base, position they played the most. Um, and that's it. That's really it for the position players, pitchers, percentage of time they faced a left-handed batter, right-handed batter, complete games, uh, hits per nine innings walks per nine innings, strikeouts per nine, your starting lineup. So just kind of a rundown, basically, you know, anything you can 
Nothing you can't find on a baseball reference, that's for sure. Of course, it wasn't around back then. Now, this right here is kind of the, uh, well, let, let's see what they call it. They call it the Master Strategy Playbook. This is your bunting, your hit and run, your stealing, squeeze play, bunt for a hit. Uh, you're going to stretch it for an extra base. And that's what they call a runner stretch is just taking an extra base is what that is. It's kind of a trifold thing so it could stand up in front of you if you wanted. There's your hit and runs, your sacrifice bunt. Uh, wild plays or rare plays type deal injuries down here your injury table so that's your master strategy playbook this is kind of a oh a little player aid I guess you would would call it some of the cards will have some letters by some of the results gives you what they mean right here in case you forget so you can kind of have this out or you can place your ballpark card here your your pictures here just another little player aid that's what I would call that uh, some score sheets they give you not bad not bad score sheets has both teams you know you can put both teams on one piece of paper um, your fielding ratings down here so not a bad little score sheet really and as long as you can get everything on one piece of paper that's what I like that's the way I like it so but I still don't know if I'll use their score sheet you know you get used to using your own score sheet now in this game you've got boards you've got uh, runner on second Runner on second and third, all your different situations. Base is empty, runner on first. So all your different situations. And then there's some on the back. Flip them over. There's the rest of them on the back. When I first got the game, I was like, oh, wait a minute, we're missing some here. And then I flipped it up. I realized you got to flip them over. But really, you know, this is, you could convert this to a, a booklet if you wanted to. You could put all these numbers on the different, kind of like the app booklet. Um, you know, first and third situation. You go through one through, I think 26 is as high as it goes. And then, you know, label each one what happens if you wanted to make it into a booklet instead of dealing with the boards. But they're kind of neat. Pretty, pretty cool. Um, here's your... All your teams already sorted out. I think you ever had this game, which by the way, I didn't mention. I uh, When I saw the game on YouTube, I immediately went to, to uh, eBay, looked on eBay and found it. About four or five of them for sale. There should be three red dies. Four or five for sale. One had to make an offer on it. So I... Uh, I made an offer. Anytime there's a make an offer, I'm going to make an offer on it. Um, and about 30 minutes later, he took my offer. So that's how I got the game. I didn't did not mention that, but whoever had this game first, I think all they did literally was sort the thing out, and then they probably looked at the instruction booklet and said, "Well, forget that. I'm not. I'm not going to get into that." But anyway, let's uh, flip this around. It's kind of upside down. So you've got, here's some strategy cards, which if you're playing by yourself, you don't really need. Um, you know, you can play these if you're playing somebody else. Or you can just do it the conventional way and say, hey, I'm going to steal. Here's a pickoff. This is kind of neat. There's a pickoff, actual pickoff attempt. If you want to really try to get pick off the base runner. You know, infield in, outfield in, bunt, etc. All that stuff. Here's your 
National League stadiums. All your National League stadiums, your American League stadiums over here. All your teams, abbreviations here. So, and that's it. That is, everything is going to basically come off the cards and then to these boards. That's where you're, that's all there is. There's no, no other charts. These are your charts right here. So I'm going to, again, pause the video and clear, you know, clear this out and set up so we can do some little scenario playthroughs and you can see how it works. So I'll be back with that in just a second. Okay, so let's look at how this game works. Um, it's, like I said, it's not like any other game out there. You've got three dice. There is a touch, a very small touch of History Maker Baseball here. And a real small touch of Atba. As you can see, the cards kind of resemble an Atba card a little bit. But other than that, it's it's pretty much its own thing. So you're going to take your four dice. You got three D6s and a white D6, which is numbered what? One to five with a blank. Which, time out just a second. Oh, I had to get a ballpark card out. We're playing in Yankee Stadium, this little setup I've got Mike Witt pitching Bo Jackson is at the plate what you're gonna do these boards are really slick I mean if you lay them on top of each other I mean they move real easy roll all four dice and you're gonna arrange them low to high that's the hint of history maker baseball so one one two you're gonna set the two and this the big white die aside for the moment. So we have an 11, which I don't really want to start off with an 11, so I'm going to start off with a 12. We'll come back to an 11 later. So a 12, you're going to look at both cards, pitcher and hitter. A 12 on Mike Witt is a 10. A 12 on Bo Jackson is a 4. You're going to take the lower number. So it's a four. We look on here, find the four, and four is a strikeout. So Bo Jackson strikes out. Now we're going to change it to a, let's say a, let's just say a uh, 15. And this is a five. And we'll just roll this two. This is basically the ballpark card or fielding, a fielding check or a ballpark check is what this is. And this we'll come back to in a minute. Okay, 15. 15 on Mike Witt is a two. 15 on Bo Jackson is a 10. Now there's a D next to it. If you go back to this little player aid here, a D means double play. If first base is occupied and no bunt or hit and run plays on, read the result as double play six. Throw to second first, second to first, runner on second, or third base advances one base. So that means if there's a runner on first, if it's a double play situation, we would take this number. Even though it's higher, then the two, if the letter that's next to the number is applicable, you're going to take that number no matter what. Doesn't matter. Okay, so if there was a runner on first, we would take the 10. But since there's not, we take the two and it's a foul out. Let's say this is a six. It's a foul out to the first baseman. Or actually, it's a, yeah, it's a foul out to the first baseman. 03 is their, 
is their um, scoring method. Okay, so there's that example. Let's, uh, I don't want to use that six there. We'll come back to that. Let's try a different one. Let's say that's a, um, it is a, let's say a blah, blah, blah. Oh, Bo Jackson, where? Let's see, a 23. Yeah, I'll say 23. It's a 23, 236. 236. So a 23 is a 17M. And over here, Bo Jackson has an 11. So M is men on base, at least one runner on base, then it would be applicable. Let's say there's nobody on base and we're on the bases empty chart. So we're going to go to Bo Jackson 11. 11 right here, ground out to third. But there's a six here. If this, the high die that you set aside matches that six, matches this number, it's usually going to be a six or a five, a five or a six. Now there's a four there, but I think mainly it's fives or sixes. So the six does match, which means we're gonna to go to this die. This die is a two. If it's a one or a two, you'll look under these first two. If it's a three, four, or five, it's gonna be a fielder check. So basically a one or two is a ballpark check. B stands for ballpark. F stands for fielder. So if it was a three, four or five, we'd look at the fielder, the third baseman. But it's a two. It's a ground out. First of all, let's look at, it's a two, B2, and it was a ground out. So we'll look at ground ball, GB, ground ball two. The two means this column right here, second, first, second, error, or no, which those come in more on the fielding. The error and the no come in more on the fielding. There are some no's and errors on here, but on your fielding check. So we have a ground ball, a two. So we come down here, let's say there's nobody out, it's a ground out at first base. Ground out at first base. So he's ground out, he's thrown out at first base is what that means. It really wouldn't matter how many outs there are. It's going to be a ground out to first base, as you can see here. The only time it's going to get these change with the different base situations, bases empty is pretty, there's not much uh, variation there. But let's say, it's, uh, let's say it's the third baseman check. Let's say it's a four. Third baseman is, let's find the third baseman. Third baseman, Mike Blowers could be the third baseman. Let's say Mike Blowers is playing third. You're going to roll all three dice. Here's his fielding rating, 53E4. So we're going to try to match one of those numbers five, three, or four. You don't really want to match the four because then it's probably an error. You range them low to high, one, three, four. We'll take the high die. Does it match any of those numbers? Five, three, or four, it matches the four. So we'll come here under error, depending on how many outs there are. And as you can see on this one, it's going to be an error on Blowers. And I think, you know, the more you play this game, you're going to get these boards down. You're going to, you're going to know four is a strikeout, just like an app, but 13 is a strikeout. You'll get these down. Let's go to the back to the ballpark card. Let's say it's a two again. Let's say it's a line out and there's no, it says no here. Then we'll go to the no column over here actually, if it's a line out, you'll look at LO line out single. 
if it was an error, if it had an E here, which I don't know that it's going to under the ballpark part, I think that's really only for fielders. But anyway, let's do another. Just I'm just going to roll them and see what happens. Bo Jackson, Mike with one, two, three. One, two, three. So we'll set that aside to 12. 12 to 10. We already had that, didn't we? Four. That's a strikeout. All right, a one, three, six. 13, 22, T, and we had that. Well, no, we didn't have Did we have that? 22, T, he's not tired. And a 13 on the 13. So a 13 is what we're going to take. 13 is a single with bases empty. And there's no number next to it. No, usually I guess on singles. The plus means he has a chance for an extra base. He could take an extra, try to stretch it for two if he wanted. Um, but there's nothing there, so single. Let's check out runner on first. Let's say Bo Jackson wants to steal. Stealing. Let's go over that real quick. It's not hard. You're going to take the pitcher's pick off, which is zero. You're going to take, here's Bo Jackson, stolen base and run number. Stolen base is five, run number is four. So the five is what we're going to look at, minus zero here. Then we're going to look at the catcher, Matt Noakes. Matt Noakes is a 45. So we've got a five and a 45. So we're going to look at five, and we're going to come down to 45, which is the catcher. So it tells you right here, first digit only, plus pickoff move, which is what I just showed you. 45, and Bo Jackson's a 5, minus 0 is a 5. So here's our numbers right here, this little section right in here. Roll the three red D6s, arrange them low to high, take the high die, and you're going to look here, Matt Noakes is a 45, and Bo Jackson was a 5. So a 2 or a Two or five, he gets a good lead. So we got a five on the high die. So he gets a good lead. Now we're going to roll again. Arrange them low to high again. One, three, four. We're going to use the four. And does the four match his SB or stolen base run rating? It matches the second number. The four is the second number in his stolen base run rating. So we'll look under the second number under good lead. And he is safe. If it did not match, if it was anything other than a five or a four, he'd be out. So I have a question for you math whizzes out there. What's the difference between, I know there's a difference, I can tell, but I don't know how to calculate it or figure it or whatever. Me taking just one die and going, oh, it's a six, it doesn't match, he's out versus all three and taking the high die now see we rolled two sixes there but we're still we're taking a six which doesn't match he would be out I think it's kind of it's really kind of interesting to me that instead of just rolling one d6 you roll all three you take the high one what how does that change the percentages Somebody that knows more about math can figure that out. I, I mean, to me, that's pretty, pretty deep, pretty deep thinking. I'm not a math whiz at all. So, but that's all you do for stealing. Um, kind of the same thing. If you, let's say, let's see, what do we want to do here? Um, let's say it's a single to right field. Advance one base plus. So that means you can try for an extra base. So right field, say Bo Jackson hits one to right field. 
or he's on first base. There's a runner on first. We're on the. It's kind of marked out here for you, so you know you're on the runner on first. Um, Bo Jackson's at first. He's going to try for third. You would look at his SB run rating. You're going to find the right fielder. Find his rating here. Let's say he's a. Let's say he's 54. Roll all three dice. The one, one, two. So we take the two. We look under. First of all, it was a 15 was the the result. And these are your result numbers here. Short fly ball, 13 to 20. It was a 15, so it's going to fall in here as a short fly ball. The right fielder is a 54. We roll the two. So we have an error. So if an error should result, the stretching runner reaches base safely and advances an additional base on the throwing error by the fielder. So he would get to third and he would come home on a throwing error. All runners also advance an additional base on the error. For good or poor jumps, in other words, if it was a good or poor, you would refer to this table down here. Again, rolling like we did earlier for stolen base. Take the five. It matches the first digit. If you had a good jump, he's safe. Even with a poor jump, he's safe. Since he matched that first digit. Now, if he matched the second digit and it was a poor jump, he'd be out. Um, let's see what else. Okay, so on a hit and run, instead of looking at the the chart or the board, you're going to look at this chart right here. So you roll all the dice, range them low to high. Two, four, six, twenty-four. So first of all, you're going to have to get your number. So twenty-four is a seventeen. Twenty-four is a four on Bo Jackson. So it's a four. So it's a to the catcher. It's a hit to the catcher. The catcher is the fielder anyway. Now we're going to roll again. We're going to check his fielding rating. And we'll match the high die, three. Matt, no Matt Noakes is the catcher. Does not match any of his numbers. He's a 4-5-E-2. So no. It's a strikeout and a steal and steal second base. Runners on first and third. That's first and third, my bad. How about hit and run, runner on first? Same thing, strikeout, hit and run, runner on first, strikeout, so the batter strikes out and then steal second base with a good lead. So you'll have to check the, the uh, stolen base with a good lead is what you would do. You go back to the stolen base chart with a good lead. Now once, like I said, once you play all this, you're gonna, you're gonna know this stuff. Once you play it quite a few times, you're gonna know it. You'd come down here, after, check the good lead section, steal enough second. As long as it matches the number, he's safe. If it doesn't, he's out. Basically, that's all there is to it on that. Now I wanted to go back and look at some more situations here. Let's say we roll an 11, like we did earlier. And whatever, a three. 11 is an 11 on Mike Witt. It's a zero on Bo Jackson. So the, obviously zero is less than 11, so we're gonna take the zero. Then you're gonna take this, the high number, and put it with the zero. So it's a zero three, 13 is the, is the result. 13 with run on first is gonna be a short fly. He flies out to left field. Is what the result would be there. Um, there's obviously going to be no matching the third, the high die, because you used it on the zero. 
let's say you get, let's say this is a two. Uh, where is it? Two. Obviously, we're going to get a zero again on the 11. And you're going to put it with a two, which is a one. There's no one on here anywhere, which means you're going to roll again. All four dice, you'll roll again, and you'll check only on Bo Jackson's card this time. No comparing pitcher and hitter card. 1 3 is 13. Short fly. It's a 4 here, so that doesn't match the 5, so we don't have a, a ballpark or fielding check in play there. It's just a fly out to left. Let's try to get something else here. 35, 3 5 is a 5. So a 5 is. Down here, he walks. Five's a walk. Let's say it's a. Um, 36. Uh, it was a 36. Look at there. It's a 14. 14 single. Runners advance one base. Single into left field. So if you get a zero, you'll take the high die, put it with it, and you'll come up with your result here. If the, it ends up being a one, you re-roll again. This one too. And then you get 24. Only look on Bo Jackson's card. 24 is a four and he strikes out. So it doesn't necessarily mean, it's not like ABBA where you get a zero and then, oh, it's nothing but good stuff. This is a little bit different. It does mean you get, so I mean, the, the guy that came up with this formula is just, for it to work, is pretty amazing to me. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I need to, to go over. Again, if it has a letter, you're gonna go with that. If it's applicable, you'll go with it. Oh, the uh, fatigue rating for the pitcher. Starting pitcher runs per inning. Allowed innings appeared. <laughs> That's what it stands for. Starting pitching running or runs allowed innings appeared. So he would be tired if he gives up three runs or more and or appears in five innings or more. So if he's appeared in five innings and it's appeared in, not pitched. In other words, he, if let's say a reliever comes in and he gets one out in an inning, he's appeared in one inning, he pe appeared in that inning. So it's appeared in innings, not innings pitched. Okay, there's like three different ways a pitcher can become tired. Once he's, if he's reached his number of runs, and it's earned or unearned, it doesn't matter. It's, so his is a three. Once the number of actual runs allowed has been reached, he is now tired. So if he's if he allows three or more runs, he's a, he's tired. Or, and he will just use the T. Now if he's allowed his three runs, and he's reached five innings appeared, then the next batter and all batters after that will get to use the T and a red plus. Now you're saying, where's a red plus at? These are the red pluses right here. So if you get a six here, and pitcher's tired, there's three red pluses here. That means you're gonna add three to the six. So the six becomes a nine. And so instead of a line out, it's a force out. 
if it was a 9, if you got this, now it doesn't go from here to a 12 because there's three more pluses here. It just stops here. So let's say he's tired and you get a 12. Instead of being a force out, 5, 4, it is, you're going to add 2 to it and it's going to be a single. Which makes more sense to me. Okay, so basically there's either he's either tired, if he's reached both of these numbers have been eclipsed or matched, he is tired plus. Then the plus has come into effect. That's the picture of fatigue. Uh, what else? I think I've covered pretty much everything. Let's look at it. Let's just roll some dice here and see what happens. So 225, 22 is a 6, 22 is a 14 L. Okay, so L means is the pitcher left handed. Mike Witt is not, so it's not applicable. So we'll take the 6 off Mike Witt's card, and it's going to be a line out. And there's a 6 next to it, but it doesn't match the 5. So it's a line out to third. Again, if it matches, if this matches this, then we're going to have a check. And it depends on this die. We're going to go to a one or two, ballpark. In this case, it's a three. We would go to the fielder. Mike Blowers, third base. Roll again. Don't roll the high one. We'll take the high die, a four. <laughs> and he gets an error. He gets the E. It was actually a line out. So line out under error. First on error, runners advance two, base, two bases. So Mike Blowers ends up with an error again. And that's, that's a pretty quick feeling check, I think. Not bad. So a three, three, four. 33, 5, tired, he's, he's not tired, 4, so 5 and a 4, 4 is lower, 4 is a strikeout. And that's the number you're going to learn pretty quick, 5s and 4s, walks, strikeouts. Well, let's say, let's say this number did match, but this comes up blank. If this is blank, you just use the result of the play it doesn't matter if this matches or not it doesn't matter if it matches if it's blank you just use the play so again another little wrinkle that you've got to figure out mathematically you know putting that blank on there I mean like I said Rain Man came up with this game as far as I'm concerned if you guys have any questions you have the game and you still have some questions on something let me know I think I pretty well have it down there's there's some things that I haven't done everything yet I haven't bought for a hit I haven't tried that um, all right let's try bump for a hit that's something that uh, a lot of games don't really have so we'll try that so basically instead of looking at the board you're gonna look here you're gonna do just like normal one three five so one three is 22 and a 13 is a 13 for Jackson so we're going to take the 13 because he's not tired and it's going to be the pitcher is going to be fielding the ball now we're going to roll again and we're going to look under his bunt sacrifice rating BT sack right here three one and we get a three. We we'll take the high one. It matches the first number. First number under. We'll come down under first number column, and it's a single. He makes it bunts for a hit. Basically, he was going to single no matter what, wasn't he? Thirteen's a good bunt for a hit number. Didn't even need to roll it. 
Didn't even need to check his rating on it. Well, yeah, even if you don't match, a no is still a single. So that is bump for hit. Pretty easy. Like if you have any questions, comments, let me know in the comment section down below. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And let me know if you plan on getting the game, whatever. Give me some comments. Till the next time. You guys take care and God bless.